One of the dumbest questions I keep getting over and over again is this. Why do Christians wear crosses when Jesus died on the cross? If Jesus had been executed in an electric chair, would you wear a pendant of an electric chair? And when I say that this is one of the dumbest questions I get, I don't mean that there's something inherently stupid about the question. If the only thing someone knew about Christianity was that our guy died on the cross, I can see why someone might wonder why followers of Jesus wear a cross. So there's nothing wrong with asking for clarification. I'm saying that this is one of the dumbest questions I get because it's clearly one of those questions that someone asked a long time ago and that other people started mindlessly copying and then acting like they spotted some serious problem in the Christian community. You can tell that they're all just copying the same question because they all use the example of the electric chair. Zero thought put into this. But even though there's no original thought involved, they act like they've come up with some brilliant objection. Oh my goodness, Christians are wearing crosses. Don't they realize that Jesus died on one of those? Why are they celebrating the public execution of Jesus? I have to take these deep thoughts that I copied from someone else and post them hundreds of times in the comments section of YouTube. Hey David, why are you wearing a cross when Jesus died on the cross? If Jesus had been executed in an electric chair, would you be wearing an electric chair? I've seen this objection so many times that I decided to respond in a video so I can just share the link to this video whenever someone asks the same worn out question. So why do Christians wear crosses? Well, there can be several different reasons. We'll get to the most important ones last. To be clear, there are people who just wear crosses as jewelry. There are even non-Christians who wear crosses as jewelry. For them, there's no reason apart from they like the way it looks. There are some people who are a little superstitious and who think that the symbol of the cross has the power to ward off evil. There are Christian denominations that encourage Christians to wear a cross after their baptism or confirmation. Christians from different areas or different denominations or different orders can wear different styles of crosses that help distinguish them from Christians in other areas or from other denominations or orders. So there are all kinds of reasons people might wear a cross. But why did wearing a cross become so common in Christianity? Let's read a passage. This is Matthew 16, starting at verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. So Jesus says that he's got something he has to do. He has to die and rise from the dead. Peter rebukes him, This shall never happen to you. Why not, Peter? Because Jesus is the Messiah. The Messiah is supposed to destroy the Romans, not be killed by them. Jesus rebukes Peter back and says, Get behind me, Satan. Pretty harsh. Why the harsh rebuke? Because Peter was not setting his mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. And then, right after rebuking Peter for setting his mind on the things of man, like crushing your enemies, instead of on the things of God, matters of salvation, Jesus tells his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, a Christian taking up his cross back then could sometimes be literal. There were plenty of early Christians who were crucified. But more generally, taking up your cross refers to denying your own self-centered, self-serving desires and focusing on what God wants. 
So, because of passages like this in the Gospels, many Christians started wearing crosses as a reminder to focus on the things of God, not on the things of man. That guy insulted me. I want to be famous. I want a fancy new car. But how important are those things, really? So, that's one of the main reasons wearing a cross became so common in Christianity. Wearing a cross is a reminder that we've been called to take up our cross. But there's more. The other main reason was something else the cross symbolized. Today, when we see a cross, we think, Jesus, Christianity, salvation. In the first century, before the spread of Christianity, when you saw a cross, it had absolutely nothing to do with Jesus, Christianity, salvation, or anything good. In the first century, when you saw a cross up on a hill, you thought, ah, Romans, don't upset them or they'll nail you to one of those things. In the first century, the cross was a symbol of Roman power and dominion. It was a reminder that if you cross the Romans, pun intended, there will be merciless and brutal executions. If you get in the way of Roman power and dominion, the Romans were going to make an example out of you. By lashing you until your skin was hanging from your back in ribbons and nailing you to a cross, naked and bleeding, until death ended your agony, sometimes after days of hanging there, the Romans would turn you into a warning. You'd be a warning to everyone else in your group, to all your friends, and to everyone who saw you hanging on that cross. Do not mess with the Roman Empire. Now, what happens when the creator of the universe enters creation as Jesus of Nazareth? He performs miracles, he feeds people, he cleanses lepers, he gives sight to the blind, he raises the dead. Obviously, this guy is the one who can crush the Romans for us. But then, the Romans crucify him too. Worst thing that can possibly happen. All your hopes and dreams are shattered by the Romans. But then you find out, three days later, that Jesus rose from the dead. And the risen Jesus starts explaining the scriptures to you. And you realize that it was all for you. And that what seemed to you like the worst thing that could possibly happen, because you were focused on the things of man, was actually the greatest thing that could possibly happen, now that you understand the things of God. The cross went from being a symbol of Roman power to being a symbol of God's power. God can turn the worst into the best. Christians don't wear crosses to celebrate some particular method of execution. We wear crosses to celebrate God's ability to turn the worst that human beings can do into the greatest thing that ever happened. And once you absorb that reality, how does it affect you? What did the Apostle Paul say in Romans 8? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. What can this world really do to us? Take your best shot, world. What do you got for me? Jail? Prison? Mental hospitals, children on life support, dad dying drunk with his head in a garbage can, mom dying of an overdose, jihadis babbling about how they're going to murder me in 27 different ways. Do your worst, world, because we've already won.